Hi, I am so excited to be making this video because this is my first ever mid-year check-in. This is every single book I have read so far in 2024. I have read 12 books so far. My goal is 30, so I'm obviously a bit behind schedule. I'm about to enter prime reading month season. So hopefully I'll pick that up. I've had a couple books. I've actually had three books that I've definitely started and made decent progress in, but I haven't finished them. I'm gonna share what books I've read, the mode I read them in, my rating, and if I would recommend them or not. I definitely read very cross genre so far this year. Starting off January 10th, I actually finished Billy Summers by Stephen King. So I actually read this book for my most viewed video on my entire channel that will leave you whiplash 100 percent. that's the only comment on the back that i agree with why would you do that i think they should have died plot twist after plot twist after plot twist it's quite entertaining and that's swapping books with my dad so i read stephen king and he read that book and he liked it and so he read survive the night which is a book that I found to be good and he hated. So if you're interested in that, then you should definitely check that out. But I ended up giving Stephen King, Billy Summers, four stars. You can definitely hear more of my thoughts in that video. I would recommend this book for you if you already are into Stephen King. I feel like it reads like the rest of his. I always say like the first half of the book was like, that's a really cool idea. It's about this guy who is a manhunter and he's taking his last mission for a large sum of money. And in order to do this mission, he has to move into this neighborhood, pretend he's just a regular guy, and then eventually he's going to have to snipe one of these men and that was like really cool he was like living day to day and obviously his dream is to be an author so he's writing like this story and the ending was strange and you know honestly I would let you interpret it differently <laughs> I had critiques but the first half was really interesting and great eventually he meets some other characters who kind of join him on the mission next and this was for another video which was me entering my hunger games era i read the hunger games book one and so obviously i've seen the films but i wanted to be part of the experience with that so i listened to this as an audiobook and i'm pretty sure i rated it five stars no i rated it four stars I do think the writing I found a little annoying and I think the writing made Katniss worse than the producers did on screen Katniss and I found her more irritating and she definitely fell into some of the problems that come with being a dystopian YA female protagonist and I thought the writing was super young which isn't its fault I think it is a YA so that would make sense but there was interesting scenes that were cut out or details that were cut out of the movie that I really enjoyed and I would have loved to see on screen totally would recommend it if you haven't seen the movies a hundred percent you should be reading the books and you should be watching the movies but if you watch the movies and you're book curious I would totally say give it a go I like listening to it in just an audiobook because with audiobooks I don't pay attention as well and I already knew the basic plot next I read Queen of Shadows which is the fourth book in this Fern of Glass series I read this on my Kobo and I finished this in January wow I was having a great January month three books in one month is honestly impressive for me I love this book I gave it five stars I think it's my favorite so far of the Throne of Glass series I am currently reading Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms in tandem and I'll talk a little bit more about that later but for this book it's hard for me to share without giving spoilers but Essentially for the series, this girl, Selena, is this well-known famous assassin, but no one knows her identity. She gets sent to this slave camp in Endovir because something happened in her last mission, and depending on the reading order is, you don't find out about what really went down that night. We just know that this girl is good at killing people, and eventually the prince comes and offers her an opportunity to be the king's champion. Now the king is this horrible evil man. Initially she obviously declines because being his champion is basically saying I'm going to be his private assassin. She's convinced and she has to go through these trials to see if she becomes the king's champion. Now if you've read the series you know that 
by Era Fire. It's a completely different series uh, with different focuses and characters that become main characters and the plot just takes a turn. Love the series and I loved that book so much. The next book I read was Catching Fire which is the second book on the Hunger Games. This one I gave five stars. It's my favorite movie and it was definitely my favorite book. I love the details that were added in. I love Finnick. Everything about the second book is amazing and I'm absolutely obsessed beyond and there's so many just cool things about it. I love the idea of like the quarter quell having like an extra challenge and I started to understand the politics definitely better in this book. Okay the next book I read was A Map to the Door of No Return. I feel like I haven't been saying the authors. This one is by Diane Brand and this book is essentially about the black diaspora and I'm including this video because I did read it and I didn't read it for nothing but I did read it for an English class and it still counts towards my reading I put it on my goodreads we read it as a list of memoirs but it also was like exploratory it feels as well like a bunch of mini essays which it's not but it's kind of structured like that and it feels disrespectful to give this a rating I mean I was supposed to have read four more for that class but I decided to stop doing the readings <laughs> Okay, next I read Mockingjay, so Hunger Games book three. I hated this. I gave it a three star, but it felt like Gale was really getting a moment and he didn't deserve the moment. I didn't appreciate the extra details that were in this book that weren't in the movie, but it did prove to me that the movies could have been one movie instead of two. I understand why they would have made it two, um, simply from a financials perspective, but it totally should have been one because it was so drawn out in the movies. Like, oh, they were giving us too many details. Some things that the book told us that the movies didn't was um, like they got their schedules like printed on their arms every day and they had to like put it in like a scanner and like they were very strict in District 13 about their schedules. I didn't enjoy this at all. And they also destroyed all the characters. I no longer cared about them because I didn't think they were good people. It felt just like we were in a cave the whole time, which we kind of were until like the last 10%. The next book I read was The Woman and Me by Britney Spears. Although, was it really? I don't know. And I don't, I, there's like a huge thing right now where people like aren't rating memoirs. So I didn't rate it on Goodreads, but what I will say in terms of critiques of this was if you know Britney Spears, like you know her life story and like all the news headlines and stuff, don't expect to be getting any extra information on that. Instead, you're getting to know Britney Spears herself. In a way, it's a love letter to her fans, being super appreciative of people like picking up on things and helping her in the Free Britney movement. I felt like she almost felt like she needed to like write this to give something of herself to people. They're definitely, if you've read the headlines, like especially about Justin Timberlake, then you've heard the main stuff that came out in this book that we didn't know about her previously. That being said, if you don't know Britney Spears, you might be confused because not a ton, especially around her family members and siblings, is explained very well. And like Jamie Lynn, you gotta know her before you go in. It's not gonna be explained very well. At least that's what I found as someone who doesn't know Britney Spears super well. I was definitely a little confused. I knew like the main stories, but I didn't really know the main players. I like learned a bit and I was entertained. Overall, I did enjoy it as a memoir. I listened to it as an audiobook. Also, Britney Spears does not narrate more than the introduction. So don't be expecting Britney Spears' voice. If it was Britney Spears, maybe I'd like it a little more. Not that the narrator was bad. All right, so next I read Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This book has been a work in progress for a long time. I started it in my Dark Academia week. And this book is super interesting. It's about Eli and Victor. And these two went to university together. They are both pursuing a PhD. And Eli decides to write his thesis on EOs or extraordinaries. And it's really interesting because no one really believes in extraordinaries. It's kind of like a conspiracy theory, but they're essentially like superhumans and each one has like a different power. And so Eli and Victor, because Victor is passionate about like adrenaline and stuff, they decide they're gonna kind of investigate it together. And eventually they turn out how to potentially turn themselves into EOs. And then the two of them create destruction. 
So we actually start the opening by seeing Victor coming out of prison and we get some different timeline hopping and so we don't get the full story until the end between the two of them but it's really about one coming back to hunt the other for some mistakes that were made and we don't find those out until later super interesting book and i gave this book a four stars and i really liked it when i got going there was definitely a lull like a big lull. The concept was interesting. Eli read the follow-up to this and said it wasn't worth my time, but I know there's a lot of different short stories about different EOs that one of the characters hunts down and kills. I really enjoyed the end of this book and I liked how it ended and I felt like both the characters were morally not gray, just like bad. <laughs> and I kind of enjoyed that. I enjoyed knowing that both these characters like were both making bad choices and you know we were getting the perspective of both of them but you start with one of them and you think oh Eli's so bad and then you read Eli's and you go well I think they're both bad. <laughs> totally see how this could take this obsession could take over someone and they both interpret knowledge about the EOs very differently and their responsibility very differently. The next book I read was Bride. Thank you, mom, for letting me borrow this copy. This is an amazing book. This is by Allie Hazelwood, whom I am obsessed with. This was her introduction to fantasy. You've probably seen it floating around on the internet. It's amazing, and I gave it five stars. If I were to explain this book to someone, I would sound crazy. And I tried to explain it to my friend the other day, the plot of this book, and I sounded like a lunatic. Essentially, in this world, this vampire who, she existed in the human world to make peace between the vampires and the humans, kind of like as an alliance. So she is a vampire, but she's very like human. Like she has human jobs and friends, and she tries to keep her vampireness on the DL. Eventually she's forced to do the same thing, but for the wolves in the world, because they need to make a new alliance with the wolves. And so she has to marry the alpha. Eventually she goes into the alpha's domain and he hates her for some reason. So they don't really interact a lot in the beginning and she's very confused, but she starts bonding with some of the other wolves. And there's a whole other plot going on because the reason she agreed to do any of this in the first place was because her best friend has gone missing and she has clues that have led her to believe that he, she might be in or connected to the wolves. So this was my first book in the Omegaverse and that was a unique experience. So I now know what nodding is and if you don't, bless you and don't Google it. I wish I was you, I didn't need to know that. Um, some of these smutty scenes were unnecessary for sure and could have been written better, but it was a good time and I rooted for the couple genuinely and it was so fun and it was just really entertaining. Ali Hazelwood writes really fun stories and her writing is really entertaining. If you want to get a tiny introduction to what that might be like, she has the Steminist novellas and those are three short stories about women in STEM and obviously Ali Hazelwood is famous for writing copy and paste characters. However, I don't mind because I actually enjoy that character and so I'm okay reading her duplicates as well. Okay, next I read One in Rome, which I gave three stars and I could barely tell you the plot. I think this was my first celebrity romance. As a result, I was kind of like icked out by the whole thing. It was real cringe. This was by Sarah Adams and she wrote another book that I'll talk about in a bit that I did really like. So I have no hate to Sarah or like her writing. It was obviously just meant to be a good time and like really fun, but it was just like a small town quirky romance. I didn't like the man. I didn't really like her. I didn't love any of the sisters. Like there were sweet moments, but it was just like, there was no one I was really like rooting for on that. That's really all I have to say, honestly. Okay, next book is The Bodyguard. I gave this five stars. I don't remember doing that, but I must have really enjoyed it. This book, I just really only remember the ending because it got really crazy at the end. This is by Catherine Center. I keep forgetting authors. Okay, so this is about this girl who is a bodyguard who just broke up with her boyfriend and gets assigned a big celebrity case, which is pretty usual for her. She goes to see this dude who's like famous. He's not really wanting a bodyguard, but he's gonna take the extra security 
and he ends up needing to go and pretend that they are dating, so fake dating, with his family so his family doesn't know that he has security so that they will be like freaked out that he has all these extra threats in his life. So they kind of live together for a little bit and get to know each other and she is just trying to keep the relationship super 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 professional. You know he's a little bit more playful and stuff and I just remember thinking that they were like really cute and I kind of liked a little role reverse from what you know I would expect and it was like a super fun read. So next is a book I read by Sarah Adams and that's The Cheat Sheet and this one I gave four stars and it's a super cringe super corny book but in a way that like I'm okay with because it was super cute and the two characters I liked I thought they were like great people and like really sweet and like wholesome and so this ballerina she got into an accident where she can't do ballet anymore she has her like own little studio where she teaches lessons at a really discounted um rate that she has really big money problems because she's super passionate about like making it affordable and stuff and she wants like other people like to be able to experience it and so one day in her past she met this guy when she was going for a run and ever since then when they reconnected they had traditions of going for runs and eventually he went off to become this like football star he ends up playing in the super bowl at the end you get his like team dynamic and so they're still friends but obviously like he's dating other people and you know they have that like friendship that they're just like refusing to move into like a relationship but we get both of their povs and they definitely both really like each other and then there is a moment where something happens and she ends up doing a collaboration with tide for a commercial where they have to be pretending that they're a couple for the commercial to work I have started Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms this year. I also started The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, but I haven't gone very far. And I am looking forward to it, but I soft DNF'd it for now, and that's kind of the tea there. But anyways, that's my major check-in, which I'm super excited about because I feel like it's a way to get a lot of books in one video and do a little review of them. Bye!